everyone. Hello, this is Gilbert Jalad. I'm talking to you here from Tufts on Tax at CPLSPA downtown Orlando. You can call us always at 877-647-7887. Again, that number is 877-647-7887. And again, this is Tufts on Tax, where all your tax questions are answered right here. This is the new year 2023, and we're starting a whole new thing new episodes uh, with about taxes to answer all your questions and to inform you more and more. You can email Mr. T. Scott Tufts at stufts at cplspa.com. That's S-T-U-F-T-S at cplspa.com. Scott, how are you today? Good to be with you. How are you this new year, 2023? It's a new year. It it hits us all and we we truck right into it, right? <laughs> yeah. And we start the tax season, of yes. course. Well, taxes are are this time of year and uh, especially in the month of January early on, folks are starting to worry about that 1099 form. Mm -hmm. 1099. And you said you wanted to talk about today, uh, in addition to the 1099 W-9 as well? Yeah. So what folks worry about in doing the 1099 is getting the right information on the form. Uh, so remember, so let's talk. Uh, 1099 is a form where you have payments of over $600 uh, that you are uh, in a business setting or trying to get those forms out there uh, and get the information correct. Um, you want the proper name and whatnot uh, information. But of course, what about the tax ID number? And it gets confusing when you have an LLC or you have a um, uh, an ink. And uh, there's some question whether you even need to do the 1099. So it's a lot more complicated than people think. So the, those who are putting together the 1099 forms are trying to get that together at this time of year. And what else we can inform the the people about those? Uh, what to look for? What uh, yeah, mistakes so, normally? So on the W nine form, that's what you should provide on the front end of the relationship. But many folks might not get around to it till now. Um, but it's a form that allows you to certify that you're giving them the proper tax ID information and the uh, whether it's the EIN or your social security number uh, because you're a disregarded entity. Uh, you've got to certify to you to the person what your number is. Um, the reason you would ideally do that W-9 on the front end of the re relationship is you'd want to secure that because if you're on the back end and you don't get it, then what do you do? What do you? How do you fill out the 1099 when you're trying to put in the uh, tax ID number or the proper ID number? You know, because you can be a single member LLC. And it be a disregarded entity. Well, who's the owner? It could be um, it could be any. It could be another entity. It could be an individual. So then, that individual will they have to put their um, social security number, or can you use a um, EIN if it's a sole proprietorship? That kind of question. So, what are uh, the situations in regards to W nine and ten ninety nine where individuals or businesses would need? your expertise to intervene? Well, so the 1099 issue and the W-9 issue can reveal a confusion, if you will, over the classification of the entity. For example, how many owners do you have? How many members? Um, are you a partnership or um, a, a individual proprietorship? Are you an S-corp? Are you a C-corp? Um, how to fill out the form? Uh, the complications that can arise from it. Now, a lot of these questions can be handled with the um, CPA, uh, the professional preparer. Uh, where I come in, though, is where there's uh, an incongruity, maybe, or an inconsistency, or even worse, there's a disagreement over whether the 1099 should be issued at all. Uh, we have protections under the federal law. If you um, are issuing a 1099, the recipient, whoever gets a 1099, mm -hmm. Um, may say, I shouldn't have gotten this 1099, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where I can step in. I can look at it and see if the 1099 uh, being issued should not have been issued, okay? So uh, someone like myself comes in for the legal part of that, the dispute mm -hmm. that arises um, over that 1099. I see. And remember, we've talked about last, last uh, year, the 1099 has two forms. There's many forms, actually, but 
One of them is a 1099 miscellaneous, and the other one is a 1099 NEC. NEC standing for non-employee compensation. So your independent contractors, your lessees, your um, those type of folks get the 1099 NEC, and then others will get the 1099 miscellaneous form, uh, which is for other types of income coming in. And you you present that in your seminars with uh, uh, Lorman, of course, yep. and you'll be presenting it with the PCC Private Corporate Council uh, CPLS PA program. Yeah, so we'll have uh, w you know um, and have had uh, web webinars and things where we get this the word out uh, on these things, and of course, on um, my site we have the um, the detailed information that gets into how these forms trigger these tax controversies. So we try and stay on top of it that way. Um, so, um, you know, getting the word out to our audience is important to know how these mm -hmm. controversies arise, how these tax forms can get, get folks into trouble. So we're starting the, the season, um, with the tax, uh, tax season, I, uh, I would say. Yeah. And we, we're going to focus on taxes, uh, obviously acutely for the year that we're unfolding, you know, the time of year. Um, but we also look at, do we interview uh, some folks with uh, different um, parts of that tax world? Uh, that's something that um, I'll be looking at and, um, you know, we, we might bring in and some uh, for interviews and whatnot. So that could get interesting. Any so, examples in the past that you faced uh, with clients or businesses uh, that involved issues with uh, W-9 or 1099? Yeah, so we... You, as a as a part of practice and whatnot, uh, folks will come in with the W nine problems or the ten ninety nine issues, uh, and uh, what you'll find though is in the in the cases that develop, um, generically speaking, the ten ninety nine is a root of a lot of problems because someone will get a ten ninety nine, they'll say I shouldn't have, um, and then how you know why did why do you say I shouldn't have gotten this? Is the number wrong? Is the amount wrong? Or is the form wrong? Um, you can also get into um, employee independent contractor disputes. You can get labor law disputes. You can get into uh, the timing, meaning let's say you get a 1099 for last year, but it should have been this year. Uh, you can get into all kinds of things. And uh, if it gets serious enough, there's federal law protections against those who issue a 1099 to uh, harass or uh, who are trying to retaliate. To harass? Yeah. So let's say there are there are examples where um, folks will will get a 1099 and they shouldn't have. For example, in the context of maybe they were um, employees mm -hmm. um, and rank and file employees who uh, should have gotten a W-2. Um, and uh, maybe they had overtime um, issues. And uh, they were then sent to 1099 to try and avoid that dispute. Uh, you have uh, cases where um, someone will actually get a 1099 for um, that will not pertain to actual money being uh, exchanged. Uh, and then you'll just have somebody do something silly and, and maybe issue a 1099 for something that didn't even exist. And, and the problem for folks that have done that is there's a statute under the Internal Revenue Code called Section 7434 that will pick up those who have filed uh, fraudulent 1099s. And the reason why is that uh, and it's a minimum $5,000 damages. Uh, it's a, it gets the IRS involved. Um, and, and what arises there is if the 1099 has been issued and it, it – in, and it's deemed to be fraudulent. Um, and and mm. what can happen is um, that can create and you can recover your uh, reasonable attorney's fees that you've incurred mm -hmm. because of that 1099 being issued. And the idea being that you should never have gotten that issued. It shouldn't have steered the IRS into a situation where they think that that accurately reports the income that should be showing up on your return. Mm -hmm. And therefore, um, you've drawn them into the concern. And again, think of the context. It's if it shouldn't have been issued. We're not talking about a situation where um, um, a mistake, mistake is made. Because what you can do there is you just contact the issuer and you say, look, I think this is a mistake. Mm -hmm. In fact, sure. you probably should do it and, and see if it gets fixed. So mm -hmm. if you do get a 1099 that's um, uh, you believe is erroneous or in, in, incorrect, 
then you go back to the issue and you say, my record suggests that I shouldn't have gotten this in this amount. Please correct it. Mm -hmm. I was, yeah, I was confused. I mean, if you receive, that's for the mistakes, but if you receive something shouldn't be issued, wait a minute. You, you, when you, when you get into 99, you know about this. Because right, right, right. You, you and, applied and, for that. Exactly. Well, you'll know it because you got that money and it should match up with what you're looking for. But that's for. a case of fraudulent right. kind of. Now there is the um, last thing I'll say is there's a corporate recipient exception. A lot of folks say, well, I'm a corporation, so I should not get a 1099 mm. uh, or, or the converse. The, the person doesn't have to issue a 1099 to incorporated businesses. So, so that they, would be the inks. They shouldn't, or they, they don't have to. Oh, they don't have to. So it's a. But they uh, can. They can. Oh. But they don't have to. Okay. Uh, now the exception to the exception, the exception to the corporate recipient exception is uh, the situation where the um, it deals with law, legal services, or medical mm. related matters. Huh. Then you still have to issue the 1099 regardless. And of course, the the news was reporting the um, I guess the PayPal. Or other such um, delivery of um, of payments across those son of, those kind of apps and so forth. That's I think been delayed until next year. But you need to look into that and talk to your tax return preparer now, who would help you with the 1099 issuances. If you've got that concern, whether you have to uh, report on those type of payments. So if um, they pay you on your website, for example, using PayPal, yeah, pay, those those various or these apps, plugins, uh, right? Do you have a do you have a reporting requirement on those? Mm, okay. And a lot of folks are concerned about that because so you know that's kind of a, it's not perceived to be the same thing. But the the um, IRS is indicating, and I think the the trend will be that they'll they'll want to get that reported, mm -hmm. um, and then crypto uh, currency exchanging. We talked last season about the forks in a the row. There's there's a desire to get those um, into some kind of reporting process. So the bottom line is um, they're looking to have the intermediaries or the folks that handle the transmittal of monies or currencies um, get involved in the reporting of that. Because mm -hmm. if you think about this, this is just simply trying to help the folks who receive the, those funds know how much they got from a particular source. Oh, wow. And I'm sure we can dive into this more yeah. in details yeah, you know, in a future you know, it, it really, episodes. I think at the end of the day, um, now's the time to get your guard up, get uh, your records together and put together um, the different information. I think the next, uh, you know, certainly want to um, be proactive at this time of year with your taxes. Yes, so. absolutely. And we're going to keep Con we're we're going to continue talking about the tax season and what we need to do and how people want to prepare. Uh, folks, you can call Mr. T. Scott Tufts if you have any of these issues or any other issues at 877-647-7887. Again, that number is 877-647-7887. Or you can email him at any time at stufts at cplspa.com. That's stufts at cplspa.com. And we'll see you next time.